50k. Yo, yo, what's happening, fellas? Welcome back to the channel. We just hit 50,000. Thank you for following the journey, following all my cringy videos back in uh, 2017, 2018, a little bit of 2019. Because we hit 50k, we are gonna talk about my sneaker collection. I am kind of a sneakerhead, but I'm not like hardcore where I have a bunch of sneakers. Nothing wrong with that, I just, uh, I don't have the money for that. So this right here is my sneaker collection. Obviously you can't see every sneaker, but I've been collecting sneakers since around 2016 when I got really into fashion. And you guys probably don't need this many sneakers, okay? Let's talk about all my sneakers slash boots. I mean, let's start with the, these ones right here. This is the Nike Special Field 2 8 inch boot. I haven't showed you guys this because um, I just haven't worn it that much. I don't need these type of boots especially since living in New Mexico, but like I said in a lot of other videos, I will be moving back to New York as soon as this disease is gone, sometime around September, unless it's still there, and then it'll probably be 2021. But yeah, whenever it's gone, I'll be moving back and I'll definitely be needing these. When I went to New York in January, it poured like crazy and all I brought was a white pair of Vans. That's like one of the worst parts of my trip. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, these are waterproof, add like good two inches of height, and it just makes you look more masculine. So I like styling these with good, you know, good old cargo pants. I just did a shoot with these today. Boots, cargo pants are like peanut butter and jelly. And the reason why I got these is because most boots, like combat boots, military boots, are like pretty uncomfortable. Luckily, this is from Nike, and so there's a little bit more comfort in these, and they also look really sick as well. And it's just, you know, I'm a fan of Nike, as you guys We'll see. Definitely recommend these if you guys have the money, you guys live in a wet area. This is made out of Gore-Tex, so it's very good for the snow, winter, hiking, all that good stuff. Now, let's move on to the Akron Imprestos. Story behind these, when I was living with Christian, you know, Frugal Aesthetic back in New York, this was an impulse buy. We just decided to pick up a pair of Akron Imprestos. He picked up the neon ones that came out in 2018. And I picked up these ones. I haven't worn these much at the time. I wasn't like super into, you know, techie tech wear outfits because I didn't have the money, one. And then I also didn't have that much closet space and I was gonna be moving. This is definitely the staple sneaker for tech wear outfits. What I like about these is just the design. And these actually brought the Nike Prestos back, in my opinion. Now there's like the Presto Utilities, just the regular Prestos. Those are all popular, more popular now. If I had the money, I would get the bamboo ones or the olive ones, and then I probably would also just pick up the regular black ones. They're actually super cheap. So if you guys are interested in the more techie fits, you can pick one of these up. They're actually pretty decently priced, as well as the all black ones. But obviously the OG ones are the most popular and most expensive. You know, I get a lot of compliments whenever I wear these because not that many people wear it. But yeah, so let's move on to the next one. This is the New Republic collection. Almost all these sneakers I bought myself, it's just these New Republic stuff that was sent over to me. But uh, this is the New Republic white leather sneakers. They're just plain white leather sneakers. They're like $100, super cheap compared to the common projects and they look exactly, exactly the same. These white leather sneakers are more for dressier outfits and more casual outfits just to look more a mature as what people would say. Now these are all pretty much the same boot. They're Chelsea boots. They have the same shape as a Chelsea boot, but they there's like a little belt that wraps around it. These are the standard Chelsea boots where there's an elastic stretchy opening. And these are just the all black ones. These are all made of suede. I do like the shape of their boots. I used to have these Chelsea boots where the the toe was just super round and it just didn't fit my feet because I have big feet. So a pointier, more sleeker silhouette like these ones fit my feet better and it just looks better in my opinion. These are the the belts ones whenever I want to switch it up from the regular Chelsea boots. Obviously I haven't worn these ones that much. I've been wearing this a lot. Not recently because uh you know, Chelsea boots kind of died in terms of streetwear. The whole Jerry Boy look, flannels, distressed denim, long line tee and Chelsea boots. I wore that like every day. It's definitely a classic. I definitely would recommend that all guys pick one of these up, especially because this is a good introduction to boots in general. Decently comfortable too. Now let's move on to the Jordan collection. I only have three pairs by the way. Let's start off with the Jordan 1, the Union LA collaboration. These are my favorite Jordans, not because of the hype, but just the way it's designed, the color blocking, is, it's beautiful to me. And how I got these was when I was living with Christian, he actually gifted these to me. And I was moving back to New Mexico from New York, still truly grateful for these sneakers. These are freaking pricey, and I would never be able to afford these. Glad to have the opportunity to get these sneakers. Thank you, Christian, if you're watching this. I don't know, I just like these a lot more than the breads, the Royals that I have because the color blocking is better. It's just a better vibe than the breads and the royals, in my opinion. I wore these with the Richie Lee cargo pants. It looked really, really good. 
and I've worn these with other fits too. Then we got the bread ones. These I picked up in 2016. I think I got these before I started my channel. This was the first pair of sneakers where I spent a lot of money on it. When these came out, these just retro. I spent like $400 on these and that was pretty stupid of me. I bought these because of the hype, blah, blah, blah. But these are actually really good. 2016 was my favorite year of the Jordan 1s just because of the tumbled leather and had the high cut as well. The ones that dropped recently were more true to the original silhouettes. It's the reverse, you know, breads where the toe is black and then the black part is red. And, you know, I just like the color blocking of this a lot better than that. These are actually aren't my size. These are 11.5, so it's a half a size up. But yeah, it still fits. It's not like Air Force Ones. If I got 11 and a half in Air Force Ones, that would make my feet look ridiculous. Even though Jordan 1s are mainly high tops, these are actually more slim fit than the Air Force Ones. But yeah, first true grail pickup for me to add to the collection. And this is like a gateway sneaker for a lot of sneaker heads and, you know, streetwear culture and all that. These are one of my favorites in terms of the history and how it got me into fashion, but I don't wear them as much anymore as I should. Now we got my Royals. These I picked up in 2017 when they first released too. I got them for retail, thank goodness. So I didn't spend that much money. I don't wear these as much. I don't know about you guys, but I go through phases between liking these and not liking these. And I wear them a lot, then I stop wearing them. I don't know. That's just with the Royals. The breads and the unions, I can just wear anytime. But the Royals, I keep on debating whether I should sell it or not. That's the Royals. That's the Jordan collection. Then we got the Nike Element 55s. These, obviously, you guys know I picked up recently. I made a video about it on how to style these and the 87s. I picked these up because I'm just a fan of React technology. I'm a huge fan of the sneaker design. This design is just way better than the Roshi Run. And I, I like to think of these like the Roshi Runs from back in like 2015, but these are just way better, more comfortable, and it goes with more outfits in my opinion, especially with the techie outfits. Love these sneakers for the comfort and the color blocking. Then we got the Nike Element 87s. My only W on the Nike sneakers app but these are just beautiful. These have been my favorite design ever by Nike so far. When I first saw these, these were sneaker of the year. I was like, this is some off-white vibes, but not the off-white price tag. I don't know, the design was amazing. You should read the history about these sneakers and why they came about. These, love these. And cause it's like my only W ever. <laughs> In three years, Nike. Anyways, we got the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbos. These are, ridiculously comfortable. These are even more comfortable than the Nike Element 87s, and that's because there's Nike Zoom technology and Nike React technology. These are just my running sneakers, and yeah, they're really breathable and they have a really nice sporty look with the racing stripe going down the middle, all the way down to the sole. Definitely stands out from your typical running sneaker. Then we got my only pair of Air Force Ones because, you know, I'm not rich at all. I'm pretty poor. I like these because they're very versatile. You can pull off the swoosh, the swoosh, Jesus. You can remove the swoosh and there, I have other ones somewhere in this room and you can just replace it. I always leave it the more asymmetrical look, you know, one's navy, one's, you know, leather brown and it's just more fun that way besides just the same color. So the next Air Force one I pick up will just be the regular triple whites or the acronym ones. I made an Air Force ones video. You guys should watch it, especially if you're short because these are super chunky and you can style that pretty awkwardly if you wear these with skinny denim. Definitely goes well with cargo pants. Definitely goes well with more slim fit pants. Not skinnies. We're almost done now. How many sneakers do I got? One, two, three, four. I have 19 pairs of sneakers and one on the way. It's from New Balance. It's a 997S. Wish I had that before filming this video, but it's all good. Let's move on to the next one. We got my, ugh. Got my Vans old schools. They're old school, you know, they're classic. This definitely should be a staple in every guy's wardrobe, in my opinion, because of the versatility. And I have a pair of, I have a pair of no-show socks in here. That's where it went. The color blocking is just black and white. You can wear this with pretty much anything. It goes well with skinny denim because it's associated with the, the skater aesthetic. And then now the skater aesthetic has moved towards baggier pants, which also suit these as well. Obviously, I've skated these quite a bit. I don't recommend picking up regular old schools and skating with them. These are just meant for lifestyle wear. If you wanna pick up a pair for skateboarding, you're gonna to wanna to stick to the pro models which have more durability, better comfort, and they're just meant for skating. These are just meant for lifestyle wear. I really messed these up, did a lot of heel flips, and I've actually ripped a pair of socks, quite a bit of pair of socks because of it. I replaced these with cream laces. I got this in 2017 as well, back when I lived in Brooklyn. Vans in general, I'm just a big fan. I've had Vans since I was like 10 years old when I started skateboarding, and these are just, you know, nostalgic for me. I had these exact pairs along with the uh, eras, you know, the black eras. If you want a simple, versatile pair of sneakers, stick with the Vans, man, Vans old schools. Then we got the 
white vans authentics just as versatile definitely perfect for the spring vibes and it's a low cut so you get more breathability which is why it's perfect for spring and summer and this has the comfy cush technology so if you pick up a pair of vans i would definitely recommend you stick to comfy cush technology it's only ten dollars more i believe way way better than just walking on regular a regular pair of vans these were the pair i brought to new york and it rained like crazy and they still look good. That's what's so great about Vans is you beat it, you scuff it up, it's still gonna look great. And it's still gonna look great when it's crispy white. Then we got the uh, Vans Check It Authentics. These were massive, huge in 2016. These obviously have been a classic. They've been around for a long, long time. But yeah, I like these because of the cream color. It's a nice switch up from just the regular white Authentics. And so I'll wear these, you know, occasionally, just not as much because I think 2016 ruined these for me. 2016, 2017. Still love these. Just another pair of Vans. Then we got still one of my favorite sneakers of all time. Came out 2015. Adidas just signed Kanye West. I'm talking about the Ultra Boost 1.0. The 1.0s were amazing. The design was iconic. These had a huge impact on fashion. Obviously, you saw a bunch of uh, Nike sneakers, but 2015, 2016, 2017, Adidas held the W and they just gave it back to Nike because they released too many of these. They really fucked up the model with the new design and they just released too many Boost Technology sneakers. Boost just got really, really played out. I'll still pick up a pair of 1.0s till this day. Comfort on these was revolutionary. These paired well with a ton of outfits, even though these were running sneakers meant for performance running, but then it got adopted to lifestyle wear and Adidas didn't really catch on to that and they just kept on making more and more of these for runners and they didn't really market towards lifestyle wear. Prime knit, super breathable, very comfortable. This was like the first sneaker I bought that made me feel like I was part of the culture, you know? It was these first, then the breads. These really made me feel like I was part of the culture because, you know, it's a, it's a gateway drug to sneaker culture and streetwear culture, but the Ultra Boost, because it was so hyped and the stores were out of stock with these, when I got this pair, I was super excited and I have a lot of memories with these, man. Obviously, they're really dirty. Wore them a lot walking around New York City. Too, mu too much memories with these, man. Too much memories. Then we got these uh, Adidas i5923s. I haven't worn these much. As you can see, the boost is pretty clean. But I got these for $55 because of a sale and honey and all that. I'll mainly just use this for running, but I still prefer these for running. These are basically the same colorway. And one's Adidas, one's Nike. Um, a lot of you guys roast me. Oh, you only have Nike sneakers. Why don't you have Adidas or anything else? Any chance you can get Boost technology, you were the man. I had a pair of Nike Air Max 270s, the Dusty Cactus ones. I gave them to my brother. Those were a good time as well. And then let's talk about the last sneaker, the Yeezy Calabasas Power Phases. I wore these a ton. 2017 when they released, I was living in Brooklyn with a roommate. I just started my YouTube channel and this is like one of my first pickups, like legit pickup from a raffle that I won on the Adidas app and it was super hyped, even though it was modeled off the Reebok classics. Then they released a second time, it was still just as hype. People were on the streets like, yo, how much you wanna sell your pair for? I'm like, no, no, man. I still wear these till this day. These are very versatile, it has a cream colorway. Pretty comfortable as well, it's not Boost technology, but it's still decently comfortable. Man, these with skinny zipper denim, those were the days, man. Like I said, they're still versatile, I can still wear them with more looser fitting pants, more skinny fitting pants, and cream is just a, a different color than obviously white sneakers. So these are also perfect for the summertime. They're not white, white sneakers, but cream's a vibe. This is still my favorite colorway, the suede colorways, eh. They're kind of whack, the black and gray colorway, not my favorite either. Stick with the OGs, man. Stick with the OGs. Those are all my sneakers. Obviously, it's not as much as other sneaker YouTubers. I still love sneakers. I still love the culture. I watch a ton of sneaker YouTubers as well. Thank you guys for getting me to 50,000 subscribers. I still can't believe I'm at 50,000. 50,000 people is a lot. And, you know, I'm just grateful for you guys. I'm thankful for you guys following the journey, supporting me, supporting the sponsors, supporting the affiliate links. You know, this is my full-time job. I'm grateful. Even with this disease going on right now, I can still make content for you guys because it's my job. I, I've already been used to working at home. So nothing's really changed for me. So seriously, truly, I'm, I'm blessed. This is seriously a freaking dream. But yeah, enough of me getting, you know, soft and shit. So if you guys wanna follow me on Instagram, go ahead and it's down in the description. Fly with Johnny Ty. It's gonna be in the comments as well. I post stupid outfits and stupid poses and you know, it's all for fun. It's not about, uh, you know, trying to flex all my, all my new pickups. 
in thousand dollar you know pieces i haven't spent a thousand dollars on any item but yeah anyways follow me on instagram guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more you know fashion content i can make more sneaker content if you guys like and also you know we hit 50k but let's try and get to 100k asap you know that way i can get the plaque and i can you know flex on the gram because i'm insecure turn that like button blue so that the youtube algorithm gods can bless the channel with love and until then stay fly stay animosity free I'm out, bro. Peace.